You're watching Startup Central and time to get on board a very exciting and very insightful uh, update and we have a guest joining us as well, Mr. Balu Ramachandran, Senior Vice President at ClearTrip. Hi, Mr. Ramachandran. Thank you so much for taking time out to chat with us. I would like to firstly know about this uh, ClearTrip for Work solution that you have just launched. Uh, it sounds like a purely B2B sort of a setup or a B2B sort of a solution. Can you tell us a bit more? Is it uh, uh, for individuals as well? Sure. Uh, so my pleasure being here on the show. So ClearTrip for Work is a B2C solution. Uh, this unlocks uh, corporate fair benefits that was previously available only within closed corporate environments into a large set of individual travelers who are either working for companies with open travel policies or are part of MSME organizations. And the entire uh, value proposition of ClearTrip for Work is unlocked by just the traveler using the GST number of her or his organization and complete the 30 second sign up process and the fares become available to the individual traveler. So it is, it is a B2C solution targeted at the individual traveler. All right. Uh, can you tell me what is the opportunity that you're eyeing in this segment? Because it's a very niche sort of a service that you're offering here. So what exactly is the opportunity size? So on the contrary, right, I think that uh, when we speak about corporate travel, uh, a lot of that today is happening within the managed corporate environments. And there is a large strata of uh, people in India who travel for work who don't have access to the corporate fairs. So if you look at some of the stats, right, uh, so uh, I think there are some 25, 30 million uh, MSMEs who are registered in India and a large set of that, about 90% of that are actually in the micro segment. And most of these uh, travelers for these companies don't have access to the corporate fairs because they are too uh, small to be targeted by the normal corporate uh, outreach programs that the travel management companies do or what airlines do or hoteliers do. So what we're doing is just unlocking that large base of travelers who are traveling for work today but are not able to get the benefits of corporate fares. Uh, we're just giving them access into the corporate fares using Clearter for Work. What exactly, what exactly is the traction that you are uh, eyeing uh, for the next one, two years? Absolutely. So I think uh, given uh, that we believe that this is a large unad unaddressed market, we, in the next 12 months we are targeting that this should enable us to reach a 100 to 150 million dollar GMV uh, on flight and hotel bookings. All right, that sounds uh, uh, heartening. Uh, when you say corporate benefits, uh, it usually varies from company to company. But typically, what exactly are the kind of services you are looking to offer now to individual travelers as well who are making trips for work? We have partnered with uh, uh, flights and hotels to bring in a whole host of benefits into this program. Um, so typical corporate fares on air, uh, come up, come with uh, free amendments. Uh, it co could come with uh, reduced cancellation benefits. Uh, on the low-cost carriers, you would tend to get a free meal as well. And there are some benefits in terms of uh, you know lower uh, seat selection fees and so on. So that's the host of benefits that come uh, on on these fares. And on top of it, what's also happening is that ClearTrip is offering a four percent discount on domestic and international flights and. Uh, on hotels, domestic and international, we have a 10% cashback as well. So that's that's really what uh, the, the set of offerings that's going to be available using ClearTrip for Work. Okay. Uh, all right. I just want to understand uh, for the benefit of our viewers who are watching the show as well. Can you tell us how exactly can uh, they avail the service? Sure. So as, as I mentioned earlier, it's a very, very simple sign up process. Uh, you come into ClearTrip uh, and within the booking flow itself, we have uh, you know opportunities for you to come into the corporate uh, cluttered for work uh, flow. Uh, all you need is your name, email ID, and a GST number, and that's it. That's you're signed up for the program. All right, that's uh, that's fairly easy. But tell me something, Mr. Ramachandran, over and above this particular solution that you're providing. Um, you are uh, you have been offering these flexi services to uh, the travelers for for some time now what exactly has been the kind of uh, revenue you've generated uh, or in terms of revenue growth that you've seen ever since you've launched flexi services so flexi fly uh, was is another product that uh, we have launched for our consumers about two months back and what that does is that it allows a person who chooses to opt for the flexi flight ticket uh, to avail of one amendment uh, free. So what that means is that the cost of the amendment that is normally charged is reimbursed back to you and you need to pay for the flight, uh, the fare difference alone. 
Uh, FlexiFly has been an interesting uh, story for us. We've uh, managed to see that uh, FlexiFly is getting a 20% attach rate, which means that 20% of the consumers who are booking uh, flights on ClearTip today are opting to go in for the FlexiFly product. So it's been phenomenal success as far as we are concerned. Okay. All right. Uh, you know, uh, over and above uh, uh, everything that you've told us about uh, Clear Trip for Work, what are the terms and conditions, or what are some uh, exceptions that uh, you know, or uh, some uh, caveats that our uh, viewers and travelers should be watching out for, if any? So, uh, as I said, the benefits of uh, the SME fares or the work fares, as we call it, are uh, kind of democratically available, and it is listed online while you're making the option. So, for, in the booking flow. You have, as a consumer, the option of either buying the retail fares or buying the work fares, and the and the specific inclusions, exclusions of those fares are are mentioned right up there. And in addition to the inclusions that are there, I think there are two aspects that I uh, I forgot to mention earlier. One is that the work fares allow you to unlock uh, you know the compliant GST invoices, which allows for easy reimbursements as well as ability to take input claim input credits of GST back into your organization. And we also have the traveler section where you find a consolidated set of uh, travel that you've done and it makes it simple, uh, more simple for you to go than make a consolidated claim as well. right? And apart from this, uh, I think that uh, there's no other TNCs really. It's just uh, all transparently available in terms of what's available and what's not available for every fare that we're making available on Theatre for Work. Okay. Uh, you know, just uh, stepping aside from your latest launch, Mr. Ramachandran, since you've been part of uh, the industry for so long, I just want to get in your perspective on um, has the travel industry or uh, travel hospitality and the kind of services you're offering, has that been impacted at all uh, by the recent slowdown? Because definitely... Uh, over and above how certain sectors have underperformed, uh, the sentimental uh, demand slowdown has really been quite significant. So have you all seen any impact at all in the last uh, three or four odd months? The Indian aviation space has seen some interesting times after the fall of Jet Airways. So the net capacity additions in India over the last six months or so has been about uh, three to four percent on average. Uh, if you contrast that with what was happening last year, in the first six months of last financial year, the net capacity additions was north of 25% uh, year on year. And uh, the growth in passenger numbers have also kind of kept pace with the capacity addition numbers, right? So last year, at the same time, we had, uh, you know, passenger growth numbers excess of 20%. This year, the passenger numbers are in the 2 to 3% uh, kind of uh, range. So I think uh, the reason why I spoke about capacity additions is that the passenger growth numbers kind of have uh, fallen slightly behind the capacity addition numbers. And so far, I don't think there's any indications, at least with the data that's come out so far, of a recessionary trend that's impacted air travel. The uh, reduction of growth is purely to do with the market sentiments and conditions after Jet Airways. That said, uh, I think that if there is a prolonged period of uh, you know, uh, slow growth and there's a lot of negativity that might impact consumer seg uh, sentiment, you would expect to see some of that translate into travel as well. Absolutely. Uh, let's also talk about uh, uh, festive trends, especially when it comes to long weekends. We've had so many this year uh, and even uh, in the coming next two months, there are a couple of long weekends lined up. Diwali, uh, there's Guru Purab, there's Christmas, etc. Uh, long weekends and even millennials who now like to travel even though there are festivals, etc. Despite that, they prefer traveling and making the most of these long weekends. So what is the kind of uptick uh, you've witnessed uh, uh, in this quarter or uh, you're expecting to witness in the last quarter of this year, which is October, November, December? So, um, generally for long weekends, what we see is that the demand tends to be 30 to 40 percent higher than the normal average time. And we don't see any change to that. I think that uh, the, uh, the, the sentiment is very, very clearly moving towards people traveling at a whim and fancy. If it is three days or four days, people are still willing to go and make travel plans, both domestically as well as internationally. I think that sentiment will still hold. I think what is important in the environment is in terms of what the overall pricing and cost of it is going to be. And as long as that's not prohibitive and airfares don't move up significantly, I think that uh, overall sentiment will remain positive and people will continue to do a lot of travel for long weekends as well.